Faraday's law says that an induced EMF is created by a changing magnetic flux through a closed conducting loop. So notice this induced EMF is equal to minus the time rate of change of magnetic flux. What that minus sign means is that it indicates that the EMF opposes the change in the flux. So in other words, that induced EMF creates an induced current, which generates an induced magnetic field, which opposes the change of the magnetic flux. There are two different ways to change the magnetic flux through a conducting loop. The first way we could change the magnetic flux is that the loop can expand, contract, or rotate. This would create a motional EMF. Another way that we can change the magnetic flux is for the magnetic field to change. Now this can be illustrated by looking at the time rate of change of magnetic flux through rewriting of Faraday's law. What we have here is if we have a magnetic flux given as the dot product of the magnetic field and the area bounded by the loop. Now for this, we are assuming that the magnetic field uh, in relationship to the loop is uniform over the loop. So the time rate of change of the magnetic flux is equal to the dot product of the time rate of change of the magnetic field with the area of the loop plus the dot product of the magnetic field times the time rate of change of the area. This is just the product rule with the dot product in these two vectors. So let's apply Faraday's law with the following example. A flashlight bulb of resistance R is connected to a rectangular circuit of wires of negligible resistance. The circuit is placed in a uniform magnetic field of strength B perpendicular to the plane of the circuit. The right wire of the circuit, which is of length L, is free to slide and is pulled at constant speed V through the magnetic field. What is the induced EMF in the loop? What is the magnitude and direction of the induced current in the loop? At what rate is power dissipated by the loop? And what is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the sliding wire? Let's begin this example with a sketch. I'll first reproduce the sketch given in the problem statement. So we have a light. This light is attached to a circuit. And this circuit includes a wire that is free to slide. This wire is sliding to the right, sliding to the right at a speed of V. Now this wire has a length of L and the entire circuit is in a uniform magnetic field. So let's indicate this uniform magnetic field by drawing X's equally spaced and the X's indicate that the magnetic field is pointing away from us down into the screen in which you're viewing this video. Part A says, find the induced EMF in the loop. Faraday's law says that the induced EMF is equal to minus the time rate of change of the magnetic flux. And this is just equal to minus the dot product of the area of the loop with the time rate of change of the magnetic field minus the dot product of the magnetic field with the time rate of change of the area. Well, in this problem, the magnetic field is constant. It's not changing. So this time rate of change of the magnetic field is equal to zero. 
This means that the EMF can only be due to the time rate of change of the area. Now, what do we mean by the area here? This is the effective area in which the magnetic flux is changing. This wire in this circuit is able to slide. And as this wire slides, the area bounded by the wire and the rest of the circuit increases or decreases in area depending on the direction of the slide. Since this wire is sliding to the right at speed V, the area bounded by the wire in the circuit increases. It increases at a constant rate since the speed is constant. And this increase of the area bounded by this circuit causes a change of magnetic flux as this circuit loop includes more and more magnetic field lines. This sketch captures the slide of this wire at an instant in time. So to find the EMF, we need to find the time rate of change of the area of bounded by this circuit loop. Now, you know the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. Here, the width of this wire is changing in time. Well, instead of calling this width W, Let's just go ahead and call this x, motivated by the fact that this, this is parallel to the conventional x-axis. And so let's indicate the location of the wire at this instant in time. Let's call that location to be x. And the origin of this x-axis is just located where the value of x is equal to 0, where the light is relative to this x-axis. So this x gives us the width of our conducting loop. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the area as a function of x. So the area is just the length times the width the width is x. The time rate of change of the area then is just the rate of change of the product of the length of the sliding wire and x. Well, the length of the sliding wire is constant, so this is the L times the time rate of change of the width of the wire. So in other words, the time rate of change of the area, or in other words, the area changes at a rate given by the product of the length of the sliding wire and the speed at which the sliding wire is moving. Because remember, speed along the x-axis, or rather velocity along the x-axis, is equal to the time rate of change of position along that x-axis. And we call it the position of that sliding wire x. So now we have an expression for the rate of change of the magnitude of the area. Now let's apply that to the EMF. The EMF is equal to minus the dot product of the magnetic field with the time rate of change of the area. Because magnetic field is a vector, and because we're dealing with an area vector, and we have to take the dot product between the two, let's construct a coordinate system so that we could express the dot product as being equal to the product of the magnitude of the magnetic field, the magnitude of the time rate of change of the area times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. Well, if we have our coordinate system where the positive x-axis is horizontal, the positive y-axis is vertical, 
that would mean that the positive z axis is coming straight towards us we have the magnetic field going away from us. So the magnetic field is in the negative Z direction. So I'll indicate that as a minus B K hat. We will choose that the area vector is coming straight for us. So the area vector will be in the positive Z direction. Now this is really arbitrary. We could have said that the area vector is in the negative z direction. But I'm seeing that this is going to help me out with that negative sign, because I don't want to have to keep track of the negative sign for the EMF. Notice that the area vector is at a 180 degree angle with the magnetic field vector. And so that angle, theta ba, being 180 degrees means that the cosine of that angle is equal to minus 1. So what we have here then is that the EMF is equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field times the time rate of change of the magnitude of the area where the minus 1 of the cosine of 180 degrees multiplied to the minus in front of the EMF means that we could turn those minuses into a plus, because a minus times a minus is a positive, of course. So we now have an expression for the EMF, that the EMF is equal to the product of the magnetic field and the length of the wire and the speed in which that wire is moving. We now have an expression for the EMF induced by the change of magnetic flux in our circuit.